Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Today it's uh, your shack, your daddy, and your professor, Rob Pankson. And today I'm going to talk to you about this topic that is very dear to my heart. That is a topic called raising men. And the reason why I'd like to talk about raising men is because number one, and number two, I have an 11 year old and an eight year old who are boys. And from the moment I met my firstborn son, and he entered my hand, he fit in my two hands, I felt this overwhelming sense of parang, I felt this overwhelming sense of, am I good enough to take care of this human? Because I want this, I want the best for this human, right? Um, I want the best for this human. I want the best for this boy. Um, but then here I am, I'm so flawed, my gosh. Uh, how many mistakes have I done in my life? How many times have I come close to the very edge of existence, literally speaking, no? Uh, living my fourth life now. Um, and at, at, to that point, uh, you feel so uh, insecure about yourself. Now, how am I so flawed? And then how am I supposed to raise this kid that I, I feel this uh, overwhelming sense that of, I need to protect him. I need to watch over him. Uh, I need to help him maximize his full potential. Uh, so it's funny. I've been on that question since the longest time, uh, since the moment I met him. Uh, and when I met his little brother, my second son, uh, I asked myself the same question all over again. And then like me, like many other fathers out there who actually care, uh, I, I took the road of asking other fathers who are already dads. Who had, and take note though, I asked dads who had pretty decent children. I don't want to ask dads who had crap children, spoiled brats, or whatever, because it's kind of not the people I want to get advice from. So I asked dad with pretty good children, and they said, you know, eventually you just have to learn. Uh, as long as you try your best, you will, uh, you'll make mistakes, and you just keep coming back. So anyway, I want to make this uh, episode, this series. I'll probably make this series for as long as I'm alive. <laughs> Uh, so this is part one on December 12th, sorry, January 12th of 2023. And it's about raising men for beginners. Uh, so if you're a new dad or if you're a new mom and you have your first uh, son uh, or even your first child for that matter. No, there's a lot of generalities here, but I'm going to be specific about the kids who are boys. Okay, so raising men for beginners. And uh, so fast forward for part one, I want to talk to you about this really quick time when I asked my uh, when I asked my sons, I'm like, hey, boys, what do you think makes a good boy? And wow, it was uh, it was an afternoon. It was a sunny afternoon, but uh, we were under the tree. So it was pretty shady. And what we were doing at the time, I remember so clearly was we had a couple of footballs, which is something that we do. Maybe they had one football each, and we would just pass the ball to each other. Football, soccer. Pass the ball to each other and uh, talk about these things. So I asked them what made a good boy. And, uh, you know, they, they really could... They really stopped and paused and thought about it, which I liked. No, you know, it's not very automatic because it's quite a... It's a very big question to ask. And um, because if I ask you what makes a good man, uh, every single one of you will have a different answer. And that that is unacceptable to me because if I'm a parent and I'm going to tell my 8 and 11 year old, you do you, you live your truth. Do you realize that the truth of an 8 and 11 year old is, uh, is confined to their Obviously, their worldview and what they're playing and what they're viewing on YouTube. So it's underdeveloped. Uh, you know, the, the prefrontal cortex is, develops at 25, if I'm not mistaken. Dr. Doctor D, tell me if that's right, no? But uh, the, the age of adolescence in the Philippines is 25, which means if you're 25 and below, uh, you're not fully developed as a human. Very difficult to make choices. So anyway, so I asked him, uh, how do you become a good boy? Big pause. And then 
Um, one of them said, uh, don't get into trouble. Correctly so. Uh, they don't want to get into trouble with their mom. They don't want to get into trouble with me. They don't want to get in trouble with, you know, the seniors, the teachers, uh, their, their nana. And uh, rightfully so, because uh, no child wants to get scolded. Um, you know, when you're young, especially 8 to 11, uh, or even younger, when you get scolded, it's it's very, it seems like the very end of the world. And uh, I noticed that the parents who believe that it's good for the kids to be verbally abused, like, um, I don't know. I don't. I don't agree with that. It makes nervous kids. It makes them insecure. It doesn't really teach them anything other than to fear you, and uh, it it uh, it doesn't. It's if if they fear you, uh, you gotta start questioning what kind of love are you trying them to are you trying to teach them, right? So love is definitely not fear. It's the opposite way. So anyway, but not getting into trouble is totally true. Um, hopefully, you know, most of us can be good parents. No one is perfect. Uh, I, for one, definitely am not. I think any parent that believes themselves perfect is a pure narcissist. And uh, if you think you're perfect, here's your... Uh, okay. Well, no one's perfect. So don't think you're perfect. No, I think that's step number one uh, for parents. Uh, because uh, that the humility and the reality of thinking of yourself as a flawed human being, trying to raise someone to the best of your abilities, puts you in a good disposition to be a good parent, believe it or not. It might seem like you're vulnerable, and definitely you are. Uh, oftentimes, it might seem like no one understands you because the grandparents wants to, want to spoil your kids. Uh, the other parents who are your friends are busy with their own kids. Uh, the people who are around you who have no children and or maybe are more are still in that phase of enjoying their life. They could care less about your kids. So sometimes you can feel very alone. And especially if you're a single parent, it can feel very alone, uh, very lonely. So, but anyway, I go outside the topic. All I'm saying is uh, you get really, you feel vulnerable. It never really leaves. However, the process of continuing to, to advance forward despite the feeling of vulnerability really allows you to develop this strength and confidence and faith uh, in, that, uh, in the principles that you're abiding by, in the disciplines that you're abiding by. Hopefully, you're a consistent parent. I think that's very important for the child's mental health. You cannot have a double standard. You cannot do say one thing but do the other. I hate it. You know, hypocrisy is just, it, it sucks. Uh, it, it'll ruin your children, you know, in my opinion. So be, be confident in your uh, advancement as a parent. Uh, not getting into trouble is something that makes a good boy, according to my kids. And I want to expound that probably to uh, when they're adults. Uh, you know, Certain, what what is the what are other synonyms for not getting into trouble? Uh, to be blameless, uh, to be righteous, not self righteous. So to be blameless, to be righteous, to have a good standing, a to have a good reputation. The world is word is your bond. So all these things that are synonymous with what my my son said. You know, just uh, don't get into trouble. It's uh. It, it shows discipline in your life. It shows a level of care of how you proceed in life. So that's definitely a quality of a good man. Uh, gone are the days, although I was brought up in those days. Gone are the days that, you know, getting into uh, trouble was the cool thing to do. As a baby boomer thing, no? Because, uh, my gosh, you know, so definitely not that. You don't want to get into trouble. But at the same time, you don't want to get too safe. You don't want to emphasize pure safety and making no mistakes because how uh, like the character of a man is developed from the good times but also the bad times. Uh, number two thing that my kids said is to listen to your parents. And well, that's true, especially if your parents are good. Um, I'm a pretty good parent. The mom of my children is a really good mom. Um, Unfortunately, not all parents are great. 
What do you do if you're listening to me now and your parent isn't great? Um, well, that's for another topic. Right now, we're talking about how to raise good men and what my kids told me. No? So definitely listen to your parents. Hopefully, your parents are good. Um, I think let's expound on that is also choose your sources wisely because everything that we are is a belief system of what we accept and what we reject. Can agree you can disagree but ultimately the reality of your life is the total summation of what you believe in is good or bad that's your belief if you believe it's good to do this a b and c and you do a b and c then automatically you do think of yourself as a good person uh, if you know in your heart that x y and z is bad yet you you falter and you are you're unable, you feel unable to control yourself and you do X, Y, Z, uh, you're at risk of feeling yourself as a bad person and you feel that you would have no agency in life. And I believe that this is the same as listening to parents because you have to choose your sources, which you yield to, which means where you yield your life to. Uh, that's why me, you know, I'm not, I'm not a fan of uh, influencers, popularity being the metric especially in social media ever since my kids were young um it's very easy to say hey you know what this youtuber has this many followers this person has this many followers and then the i don't say that's you know that, that's not good that's not bad. no i ask them okay yes but what's the message that they're peddling what's the message that they're trying to spread and then as i ask questions even to an 8 and 11 year old if you ask the question again and again, and then you continue with the follow-up questions, they come up with their own conclusions, whether this person with so many followers is spreading a good message or not. I kid you not. Eight and 11. And I think that's fabulous because that means uh, they're able to see for themselves, um, hey, you know what? Uh, if this person, they're going to question the person and not just be so impressed by superficial numbers such as like subs and follows. And I think this is also very important. It's a good exercise for you when you have children because, because uh, that way they don't accept anything at face value just because people accept it. Uh, especially now that there's chat GPT. If you don't know about chat GPT, they're not a sponsor. But uh, if you ask certain questions in this chat bot, which is supposed to be the best artificial intelligence thing on the planet right now. Uh, it gives you very biased opinions because ultimately it's programmed by people and its truth is programmed by certain people's beliefs. And, you know, a person has to be able to have enough uh, knowledge, but also have enough understanding and have enough wisdom or skill to to be able to identify whether uh, some the knowledge is a principle or an opinion, because so much is an opinion in this world. Uh, what's the difference, Chef? Uh, the law of gravity. If you jump off a building and you identify as a bird, you're still going to fall flat on your face. So the law of gravity is a, is a principle. Um, Fire will burn you. Uh, certain principles are if you live life by the sword, you know, like a lot of these things, if you live by, by the sword, you die by the sword. Meaning to say the way that you live your life eventually is what comes back to you. Some people call that, have another name for it, karma. So things like that. Uh, to be able to identify which things are principles and which things are opinion. And then later on to have a, a, a very intelligible opinion about uh, the things that you accept. And I got that all from my son saying, listen to parents. It's basically watch who you listen to. I'll repeat, no, you got to watch who you yield to. So if you want to raise a good man, uh, instead of, I know it's counterintuitive, no, but in the very beginning, you have to tell them this is bad, this is good. Eventually, when they start disagreeing with you, wow, this is tough. When they start disagreeing with you, something that I did was I instead 
had a conversation with them so that they would be able to question themselves and think, is this a principle or is this an opinion? And I remember I started this when they were five years old. Uh, when I was, uh, when they were younger, I would get mad, I would shout and yell. But the moment they started talking back to me, and not, not in a bad way, just simply communicating back to me, I realized, you know, hey, there must be a better way to quote unquote program these kids, no? And I want to program them to have a mind of their own, but it's rooted on good principles and not easily swayed or influenced by whatever is the fattest, the most popular trending topic at the time. So yeah, that's what I got from listening to parents. And then last but not the least, this came from my wonderful kids, was don't trust the internet. Don't trust people online. And I would dare say, just, just be very careful who you trust. Uh, there was this one time, there was this, the, the kids were in a Discord group with their classmates, 11 years old. Uh, and uh, one of them discovered this link in an ad for a game where when you press the link, it will match you with someone online randomly. And when you get matched with someone online randomly, you can talk. That was the app. I guess the programmers thought it was so innocent. But guess who's there in that app? Uh, it's all about, it's mostly about uh, sexual perversions, if you will. So anyway, there were the kids. They had an adult male in front of them, and the adult male saw that they were kids. And my son says, Daddy, the, the adult male pulled down his pants and showed us his private parts. Uh, and then I told my friends, let's get out of the call, but my friends still stayed there. So he decided to get out of the call, and then he told his mom and me right away. And then uh, we didn't get mad at him. We talked to him. We, we showed concern for the friends. We said that that adult male, even if he's an adult, doing that is extremely wrong. My gosh, if I saw him in real life, I would beat the living crap out of him. Can you imagine what kind of perverse person it would take for an adult male to pull down their pants and show their private parts to kids he can obviously tell are like 10, 11 years old. Uh, it's disturbing, but it's the world that we live in. Uh, we cannot shelter our kids from that. Uh, but uh, what we have to do is kind of talk them around it. So so what I told him, I know eventually he'll be stumbling on worse sites. Uh, he'll be seeing more people and he'll be around sometimes friends who have no parents to guide them, who might think it's cool to be seeing these things, which obviously it's not. If you're a kid and you're watching this video, it isn't. If you're a kid and you don't have a dad, sh 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 I'll be your dad. I'll be your YouTube dad. Diba? Just listen to me and listen to this freaking series. I'll tell you what's wrong, what's bad. And when you're acting like a freaking brat, I want to tell you to your face. Uh, I'll be your dad. Because uh, raising men is so important to me. So that's the final thing. Don't trust everything you see on the, in, online. Don't trust everything you see online. Don't trust every person on the internet. Always assume someone is out to get you on the internet. Uh, never give your real name. Never give your real uh, where you live. Never talk about your parents, your family, or anything. If you're lonely, the internet is not a place to meet someone to make a genuine connection right away. You have to attend it with a very skeptical point of view. So anyway, uh, we're going to start there. Uh, I'm going to get to, I'm going to expound on this topic more uh, as we go along. But those are the three things I wanted to share with you that I got from my kids. To be a good boy, stay away from trouble, listen to your parents or listen to the right sources. And last, don't trust everything on the internet. If there's anything you want to add, anything that you want to talk about, let's talk about it on this channel. Uh, it's, uh, so this is my daddy hat and this is part one of raising men for beginners. And I believe we're going to have more in the future. So tune in. Thank you very much. Leave some comments. Uh, do me a favor. And if you support me with subscribing and all of these things, I'm trying to get to a hundred thousand subs. If I can get to a hundred thousand subs, I can talk about these things with big time people. Because right now, no one would talk to me with my current 700 subs. Well, maybe some people would. But uh, 
there you have it. So thank you very much. That's it. Bye.